Écoutez, à midi. Quelle heure est-il Il est midi. C'est l'heure de déjeuner. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a à manger Des saucisses. Écoutez et répétez. À midi. À midi. Hi guys. Hi. À midi. I'm uh, a little bit late this morning. Sorry. Five minutes late. It's one of those mornings. Um, sometimes it happens. Uh, today we're doing printmaking, so I hope I can remember how to do printmaking on this morning. That is uh, being being quite difficult so far. Uh, right. Oh, nothing bad's happened. Sorry, I'm being quite melodramatic. I'm, I'm just a bit scattered this morning. Uh, let's start off by doing the prize draw for the competition, okay? So, next week, we are making these woven rainbow hangers. Hi, Emma. I guess you didn't get to go to the hairdressers this morning because they're not open because we live in Leicester, which is closed. Um, hi, Lisa. Right, so we're making these rainbows next week. And I have some kits, three kits to give away for the rainbows. So let's choose some winners. Do, do, do. Won't look, that's cheating, isn't it? Right, who we got here? We have Lisa May. You want a kit? And we've got Sarah James. Also want a kit. And we have Joanna Briggs. So Joanna Briggs, Lisa May and Sarah James have all won kits. So congratulations guys. Message the page and we can send out your kits. We just need your addresses. Okay, so uh, printing. I don't know if you've done printing before. I have done some lino cutting before. That's not what we're doing today because obviously for lino cutting you need more professional stuff. If, you're do if you've got stuff at home to do lino cutting, that's great. This is a bit of lino that has been cut. You can see what I've done is I've cut away the in-between spaces and then I've got the, the smooth spaces that you can see. So I'll just show you what that printed as. That was that tree. So you can see, I've got my bit of lino there, and you can see how that might turn into a print that looks a bit like that. Today we're going a bit more low tech, and we're using the traditional implement of printing, a potato. Love a potato. Uh, one minute, let me just check Sarah. I'm pretty sure that was you. Yep, Sarah, you want a kit as well. Congratulations, guys. Oh, it's nice you're watching. All the other times I've done these prize draws, no one has one's been watching, so that's exciting. Uh, some of the other stuff we're going to use for printing today. I've got this sticky back foam, quite nice stuff. Um, it's the kind of thing that they sell like in packs for kids' crafts, but you can do some really cool printing with this. So um, might not be something you have at home, but I'll, I'll show you how to use it anyway because it's fun. Uh, and some cardboard, just your regular normal cardboard that you can do, make some block prints with. Um, so, yeah, that's quite good fun. Oh, I should say about those rainbow kits, we've also got them for sale if you want a kit. You don't need a kit, all you really need is coloured wool, a needle, some wire, all the stuff's on the uh, event information, so you can just go there and find out. Uh, I don't remember if any of you remember watching the leaf printing workshop this is a printing roller that i made you don't need one but it can be quite good to use it's just a tin of chopped tomatoes wrapped in a bit of squishy foam or you can use fabric and that works really well to help with your printing but i think i'm going to start off start my printing workshop by making a very simple potato stamp sorry i'm trying to read the the messages you're writing but I've put the phone a bit further away today so I'm just squinting at you. 
Oh, you've brought a lino printing kit. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, this is, we're gonna use some lino printing tools today to get involved in our potatoes. So what I've got is I've got these metal cookie cutters and these are a really nice, simple way to make your potato stamp. What you do is you put your potato on your metal cookie cutter, you push down, so you've got your metal cookie cutter is stuck in your potato. You might be able to use plastic ones, but they might be, not be strong enough. Potatoes are pretty tough. And then you're just going to cut round, use, use a normal kitchen knife to cut round, obviously watching out for the fingers. This is a great way, if you're doing it with kids, it's a great way to get a good effect um, without like having to, you know, accidentally lose any fingers. So we're just cutting around that potato to dig out the metal cookie cutter. And this one is a little man in the moon, if you can see there. So I've got a really nice man in the moon stamp made there, ready from a potato. And I have here some carving tools, lino cutting tools. These are really inexpensive. If you go on eBay, they're only, mm, I can't remember, but you probably only spend about a fiver on them. So if you enjoy a bit of printmaking, these are good fun. And you can use them on wood as well. You can do all sorts of different printmaking with them. So I'm just gonna add a bit of detail to my man in the moon. I'm gonna give him a little smiley face. Da -da -da -da. Just chop out his little mouth here. So who's watching me from Leicester? Who's enjoying being locked down again? Sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Yes, Claire, it is a simple trick. When I thought of it, I thought, God, I'm a genius. But it's when you want to do potato printing with a workshop full of small kids, you, you do think of ways to avoid um, injury. So it's a great, great option if you're working with kids and you can make some really easy stamps. And I'm just, I'm just using my carving tools, but you can use your little kitchen knife to add your details. Um, just have to be a bit more delicate and a little bit more prepared to um, not cut yourself. I just want to, I don't want anyone watching this video and causing themselves injuries, so I'm probably going to mention cutting yourself a few more times, so just please all be careful. It's a live video, I can't help you if you slice your finger open. So if you are watching this video from not inside Leicester, then the big question is, how are you gonna go to the pub? I mean, I think even if the pubs were opening in Leicester, I wouldn't be going. It, it all seems a little bit, little bit scary, a little bit sudden, but hey, maybe, maybe it'll be fine. I don't know, I'm certainly no authority on the spread of viruses. Just the spread of arts and craft. <laughs> cheesy, right? It's okay, it's okay, I'm in a cheesy mood this morning. Oh no, I was trying to give him eyelashes, it was too much detail, the eye went a bit weird. But here we have it, we've got a moon. I've given him a mouth, I've given him an eye. Do, 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 there's a moon. So I'm going to make a star one next because um, I'm going to do, I I'm, I'm, should actually explain what I'm doing to you. I've got a large piece of brown paper here and I'm going to make some of my own wrapping paper because I think that's a really fun thing to do with printing because it's something useful, you always use wrapping paper, it means you don't have to buy it, you can print on brown paper so it can be recycled or composted unlike your regular wrapping paper. and. I mean, how nice is handmade wrapping paper? People really know that, um, that you thought of them if they get something wrapped in handmade wrapping paper. So, next stamp, just another half a potato. And I'm gonna make some star stamps now. I'm gonna have a bit of a night sky theme, I think, on my wrapping paper. 
So again, you just push your little cookie cutter into your potato. If you've got one, if you haven't got a cookie cutter, don't worry. All you have to do, I'll show you on the other potato, I'm gonna do a cloud freehand, a freehand cloud. Because uh, clouds are nice and easy to do freehand because they're basically pretty randomly shaped. So it's a great option. Stars aren't quite so much fun to do freehand because they're quite symmetrical. But you could go for an unsymmetrical star. That would be quite nice. It's a bit of a wonky star. In fact, I'm regretting having a symmetrical star. Wonky star might be way more fun. Oh, the possibilities. Maybe I'll go back. So there's my star. That's over here with my potato collection. And now it's time for a cloud. Uh, I've got a pencil, so I'm probably just going to use a pencil. I don't think it's actually going to show up, but I'm going to use it to kind of scratch my cloud design in because then I can always just slice off the layer I've scratched if I get it wrong. If I was, you know, taking this uh, more seriously, I might draw it out on a piece of paper first. So if you want to draw it out on a piece of paper first, you could always cut out that piece of paper and use that as a template for your cloud. If you're feeling very unconfident, you could get on the internet and print out some cloud shapes or whatever shape it is you want to do. And then you can use that as a template, cut it out. But I recommend just going for it. It's only a potato. If you mess it up, get another potato. You know, wash it off, eat it, it's fine. Nothing wrong with them until you cover them in paint then they're not so edible, I've got to say. Don't taste quite so nice. So here we go. Here's my lovely, can you, can you see that? Yeah, there we go. You see my little cloud shape. Whew, nice, pleased with that. So I'm going to take my kitchen knife um, if you start by cutting in the corners of your design and then cut away from your design, you don't have to cut exactly round it. I'm just sort of cutting in straight lines to the edge of the potato, but that encompasses the edge of my design. That's the best way to sort of cut away your potato. Um, really get into those corners. It's very similar to the cookie cutting method actually because what I'm going to do is once I've cut around my design like this, then I'm just going to cut around it like this, like you would with a cookie cutter to remove excess potato. I'm really enjoying how many times I get to say potato in this video. I don't know if anyone will notice, but great word, isn't it? Potato, very rhythmical. Okay, so there we go, all cut away and I'm just sort of prising it around with my fingers, making sure there's no bits that are still attached. And then I'm just going to about, probably about half a centimetre down, just cut around the edge of my design. So I'm trying not to cut too much under the pattern, but it doesn't matter if I cut a bit under the pattern because that should stay attached, whereas the other bit will come away because it's been sliced. Oh yeah, that, that's worked. Great. You always worry when you're doing craft workshops that you'll tell people something will work. You'll be like, oh yeah, this totally works. And then you do it and it doesn't work. And you're like, ha ha ha, oops. <laughs> so every time, every time it works, it's a little win. Yes, you do. You do get a lot of brown paper in the deliveries. It, I mean, it's great on the compost heap. I use a lot of mine for repacking stuff. But yeah, that brown paper from the deliveries, you can make your own beautiful wrapping paper with. Saving money, saving the planet, having some fun. How could it possibly go wrong? So I'm just gonna add some details to my cloud. I think I'm going to, uh, you know, to anthropomorphize all my um, sky things. I'm going to put a little face on my cloud as well. Let's see. Do, do, do. 
I'm using my carving tools for this. Again, you can use your kitchen knife if you've got, if that's what you're working with. Or you might have something else. You might have like a nail file or some small screwdrivers. A screwdriver, I mean, this carving tool basically looks like a screwdriver. So do have a look around and see what you find that you might be able to do interesting stuff with because you definitely don't need fancy liner cutting tools for potato stamps. I think what I wanted to show you on this workshop though is that potato stamps can be, they don't have to be just like, just for kids. Everyone can enjoy a potato stamp. I certainly enjoy a potato stamp. <laughs> oh, I think my clown looks like he's having a real good time. It's gonna rain! It's gonna rain! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm in a weird mood this morning, aren't I? You all noticed? Um, right, I'm going to put a face on my star as well. Let's see. No, I think my star should be maybe a sleepy face. I reckon stars, they're quite sleepy, aren't they? Do some closed eyes. And a little mouth. Let's say maybe like a little round mouth, like he's uh, he's snoring. Oh, actually, it kind of looks like he's singing. Look, like it's a little singing star. Oh, right. So I've got my star, my moon, my cloud. You know what, just because I can, I have got like, uh, oh, that was the bigger star. I've got a smaller star as well. So I'm gonna make two different star sizes. Actually, you know what? I might do this star freehand, feeling adventurous. Who's gonna join me in a freehand star? So I'm gonna use my pencil again to mark it out. potato in my face. Juicy potatoes, these ones. Okay. Marked out my star. Stars are really the perfect shape to cut with a knife because you're just cutting triangles, really. This potato is so juicy that I can't really see what I'm doing. So I'm just sort of cutting and hoping that when I'm finished, it's gonna be a star. Okay. Looking good, looking starry. Yes. So the competition that we're running this week, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to look, probably not, but uh, we're going to be doing notebook making. So you can make your own notebook using book binding techniques. So if you go to our Facebook page, you can enter the competition to win a kit to make a notebook. We're giving away three of those kits, so well worth entering. And I haven't actually made the event yet with all the stuff you need, but um, I'll do that. And that workshop is happening on the 18th. Yeah, so Saturday the 18th, we're doing notebook making. So that should be really good. I love making a notebook. There we go, there's another star. Am I gonna put a face on this one? Well, it would sort of seem weird. All the others have faces. I better put a face on this one, really. Be weird not to. 
Imagine that. A star without a face. How strange. Okay, we get the little eyes in. One with two little eyes. And let's find, let's put a little smiley mouth as well. All these, uh, all these clouds and stars are very happy. Probably because they're not locked down in Leicester. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop going on about it. We're very lucky that people are taking this health crisis seriously and we should be grateful to be locked down. I am, really. Okay, little star. Okay, let's print some wrapping paper. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do just like a little practice print first. So I've got some card here. Um, so I'm getting acrylic paint, just got like a normal brush. Going to just spread it on the potato. Potato should be quite wet, so I'm just gonna do some experiments now with how much paint you're gonna need on your test paper because um, different potatoes will be different amounts of wetness and I don't want you to, well, you can't really ruin your wrapping paper, it's all good. But I think, do a little bit of experimenting here, see what we think. So here's my cloud. So just put it down on your paper, make sure you apply a good firm pressure all over the potato. Don't want to have a patchy cloud, <laughs> patchy cloud cover. And then peel it off. And look at this guy. Yeah, he is excited to ruin your picnic. Right, let's do some stars now. Star stamp. Yeah, the notebook one will be good, Emma. I like making good notebooks. So this one's good, but I've been a bit less careful with the paint and it's kind of got stuck in the little holes in the eyes and the mouth, which is nice. You get a nice effect doing that, but not quite what I was going for. Um, do, do, do. So you might want to get some kitchen roll um, and not just use your fingers to clean them off like I am. I'm going to get some kitchen roll, bear with me. Can't think of everything, that would just be weird. I've also left my prick stick on the other side of the room, so I'm just going to go get that while I'm up and about anyway. Here we go, I'm back, let's go. Right, so, just gonna clean off this little star. Just get the excess paint out of his mouth and eyes. I'm gonna be a bit more careful when I'm putting the paint on him to print with him this time. Uh, the other thing I've got to try, and I know they're gonna work great, but you also might not have them at home, is just some ink pads. They're like the kind you get for, you know, for kids to do stamping with, really. They're pretty great. You can do lots with them, and um, they're especially made for stamping, so they work pretty great with potatoes as well, I would think. But let's just see if I can make it work with paint. So I've gone for a two-tone star this time. Let's push down. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying this session. You can't beat a bit of potato printing. There we go. He's a slightly angry star, red star, but yeah, looking good. Let's go for the moon. What color should I do the moon? Let's go, go for a black moon, I think. You know, nighttime, moons, dark, makes sense. Oh, it's very attractive, this man in the moon. 
or person in the moon. Give that a really good push down. Um, you will notice, especially with these first prints, because there's a lot of water in the potato, you will get extra running in your print. But there we go, got a nice man in the moon. And my final star. Might just try, I'm just gonna experiment. I'm just gonna blot this one first. So I'm just gonna try and soak up some of the extra moisture. You can cut your potatoes up a bit earlier and just leave them to dry out a little, but I think it's nice to, um, it's nicer to cut them while they're fresh. You get like a cleaner cut. So, so, you know, experiment with that as well if you want, guys. You've got so many options with all this craft stuff. I really hope that this hour we get together is really just like, opening a little window for you, showing you some ideas and then you can take away and make them your own. And that's why we love to see what you make because like we could never think of as much stuff as you guys think of. I, you know, I'm just one person. I've just got one lot of ideas. So it's so beautiful seeing everyone else's work because everyone takes my ideas or, or, or just watches my ideas and gets inspired. And it's so nice, so nice to see the different stuff you come up with. So please, do you message the page with any work that you've made recently? That, like, if it's inspired by the workshops, great. If it's not, that's also great. We'd just love to see what you've been up to. And if you don't mind us sharing that on our Facebook page, it all helps. So there we go, another star. So I've got my little night sky family. Oh, it's Sophie Handy watching. Hi, Sophie. Right, let's make some wrapping paper. Got to get rid of all this junk that I've piled up on my table. I aspire to be more organised, but I think it's just not in my uh, not in my skill set. Potato, and here we have it. A nice blank bit of paper to make some wrapping paper with. Let's get started with the moon. So the moon's eye was a bit soggy, so I've noticed that about these the little bits I've like cut out of them seem to be where the moisture's really collecting in the potato. So I'm just gonna blot the moon a bit, try and dry him out a little. Get it in his eye. So I'm gonna go for, so you could do your printing, you know, you could do a pattern where you go along like that. Do like a nice pattern, but I'm gonna go for like collections of patterns. So I'm gonna do like a sort of moon star combo and then maybe like a moon cloud combo and then sort of do that all over the paper in different places. So I'll start off with my moon. Let's get a bit of that black acrylic on it, not too much. Uh, you could even just use a bit of scrap paper just to take off any excess, just to gently stamp it on the scrap paper. Then get onto your regular sheet of paper, push down. Let's see. We've got a moon, yay! Just pay any attention to any bits that you aren't happy, like. He's got a little dent in his chin here, so I know I need to push down a bit harder there. So I'm just going to paint him again. Just going to quickly give him a little block, get any, any excess paint. Hopefully that'll help it stop it splodging and do another moon over here. If I was being way more efficient, I would probably um, do all my moons now, but I think I'm probably not gonna get this wrapping paper finished in this session. So I'm just going to do a few moons and then start building up my seams. Just be back in just a second, guys. Sorry, just seeing something I had to do. Right. OK, 
Okay, so we've got a couple of moons to be working on. So I'm going to add a star in. Mm, this brush is dirty. It's made my yellow quite a horrible colour. Oh well, let's just go with it. No accidents, eh? Gee. I'm not going to go with it. I'm going to wipe it off because the star is quite wet. I'm just going to give them a little blot and get rid of some of that extra moisture. and yellow. You can use your paintbrush to get extra paint out from inside the eyes. The yellow is quite a thin paint but I'm still going to just give it a quick just to get any extra extra off. Then I'm going to put a little star up here with my moon. See I'm not sure about I think it's kind of that's mostly looks wet to me rather than yellow. Yeah, I think yellow might not show up real well on this paper, so I'm going to mix up some more orange. Always consider that when you're printing. You don't want to go too subtle with printing. I mean, people do, and it looks great. But, uh, but maybe not with potato printing at your kitchen table. Might not be the time for subtlety. Here we go, let's try again. Uh, yeah, oh, it looks good in orange. Let's have another orange one. Well, I'm quite relieved when I was trying to think of my inspiration for what I was going to do on my, uh, my printing today. I was thinking, I can't do another rainbow. It's just exactly, it's the first thing I think of doing. But I was like, I can't have every, every session as a rainbow or a house plant because obviously that was the other thing I thought I might do. Oh, I could do, a, do some printing of a picture of my house plant. I thought, I've got to try and do something different. <laughs> uh, keep you guys interested. <laughs> So I'm glad my cookie cutters inspired me to do a night sky. Feeling pleased with that. Okay, I've got a few stars going on. Let's move on to my cloud. get rid of the extra paint. There we go. Let's add a cloud in up here. Push down on that potato. Get it printed down. There we go. Oh that's nice. They're all friends hanging out in the sky. Oh, kind of those clouds in a straight line. Not sure about that. That's my advice to anyone doing art. Avoid straight lines. They're never quite straight and they always end up looking a bit weird. So unless you're very good at measuring and using a ruler, don't use straight lines. Top tip. Cloud one might be my favourite. Just loving his cheeky grin. Right, let's get another cloud. 
add in here. Right, well, don't want to run out of time, so I think I've shown you some potato printing. We're going to go on to doing some making a cardboard block and doing some printing with that. Uh, obviously, if I was going to finish my wrapping paper, I would keep printing, but you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just going to put this over here to dry because we might come back and just do a bit of adding on once it's dry because that's a nice thing you can do with printing that um, looks really great. Okay guys, so I've got my cardboard and I've got my print stick. And doing this kind of printing, we're using the same principle as the potato printing, There's, or, or line of any kind of printing. We're using the same principle as any kind of printing, it's all got the same principle. There's a raised bit, there's a lower bit. You're gonna see the raised bit, the lower bit is going to not be seen. Um, right, so I'm going to start cutting bits up. I'm going to start off by making my, my base layer. So I'm going to cut out a bit of cardboard, which is the size I want to work on. So I've gone with something not too big. And then I'm going to cut out the shapes that I want to stick to it. So let's have a think. What's this going to be? Should stick with the night sky theme. Why not? Let's, um, let's cut out a couple of stars. So I'm just gonna start off by just quickly giving them a little draw out so I get them right. Yeah, let's cut out a few stars. I think we're gonna have a few stars and then a rain cloud raining because uh, I think that'd be fun, be fun to make. You know, be inspired by what you see around you. Rain clouds. It is not the nicest day in Leicester today. What's the weather like where you are, guys? I know a lot of you aren't in Leicester. Is it sunny in, in Brighton or Chester? Oh, yeah, Gemma. It is fab. Potato printing is a lot of fun. And I think it is really under underrepresented in the adult crafting. I think there's some crafts that people just, because it's something that you can do with kids and people do with kids, then adults just think, oh, it's not for me. I shouldn't do that because I'm an adult, so I shouldn't do potato printing. But obviously that isn't true. You're going to bring different skit. Obviously, you're going to bring uh, different skills to potato printing than a child might bring to potato printing. Um, you're going to have different imagination, and you're going to make different end results. So I think get back into all those all those crafts that you know you did when you were a kid. Have another go at them. Why not? So I've cut out a little cardboard star here. So I'm glue that onto my little cardboard block that I'm making my printing block here. So with these cardboard blocks, if you want them to last for multiple prints, you might just need to be careful of what kind of cardboard you're using, because this one is trying to peel into layers. You might need to glue the separate layers down. And if you wanted to use them for lots of prints, then I might just varnish it before you start printing with it. You don't have to use anything fancy. You can just use some PVA glue, let it dry out properly, and then, yeah, then start printing with it. But I'm just gonna make this, this is just gonna be a one or two print wonder. I'm okay with that. I'm not gonna to spend too long on it. Just get my stars in. A couple of stars on this side. Oh, 
Mm. This cardboard's a bit thin, actually. I thought it was thicker because this bit's actually doubled up. I think it's a bit thin. I've got some thicker cardboard just around the corner. I'm just going to grab some. Here we go. This is what you want. It's a nice, juicy cardboard. I could still use the thin cardboard as my block underneath, but I'm going to use the thicker cardboard to do my patterns. And I think I'm just going to skip to the cloud and the raindrops because uh, the stars were fiddly and they were annoying me. <laughs> it's just who I am today. You know, I think whatever mood you're in, just go with it. Just craft like a, like you feel. If you're not in a fiddly mood, don't try and do something fiddly, it won't work out. If you want to just get in a room and throw some paint around, then it's your day for, for doing that, you know? It's one of the biggest lessons I've sort of learnt as I have done more and more crafting is don't try and force it. You don't feel like doing that kind of crafting, you probably feel like doing something else. Don't feel like sewing, do some painting. Don't feel like painting, do some beading. Just keep moving it around, keep that creativity flowing and it will keep you happy. Right, so here's my rain cloud. Show you what I've done. It's a bit of cardboard stuck to another bit of cardboard. Nothing too exciting there. I'm just going to do some raindrops. Keep them quite big. No, no idea where that one went. Oh, found it. It's right under my nose. Done my raindrops. Be working in cardboard. Now, like the potato, just going to paint my cardboard block. Paint all the raised bits. Shouldn't matter too much if you go off them onto the the lower bits. Gonna go for a nice black cloud and some nice dark blue raindrops. Keep it traditional, eh? Don't get too crazy. Obviously, you should probably try and be a bit more crazy than I'm being. I'm playing it very safe. Right, let's have a look. So this might be a great time to use your bean can. You can just put your block on the table Put your paper over it and if you've got your foam roller bean can you can use that to just go over your paper a few times see if you can get like a nice print oh i hope this worked da, 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 da. Eh. <laughs> it has definitely worked i think the lesson here is maybe to use a bit more paint but um yeah, let's try again we're all uh we're all learning here. One of my raindrops has come off, so I'm just gonna glue that back on. 
this is the other reason that is quite good to PVA glue it because obviously the cardboard soaks up the paint so if you varnished it then the cardboard the paint will sit more on top of the cardboard so if you're doing something a bit fancier with your cardboard printing I would definitely recommend varnishing. I always think these workshops, I always think, oh, an hour, a whole hour, how is, what am I going to do? What am I going to talk about? And then I look at the clock and say, oh, I've only got 10 minutes left. Oh. And I don't even know what I've talked about. Just witted on for an hour. It's you I feel sorry for, but you know, you know where the mute button is, guys. It's all entirely up to you, whether you listen to me or not. Right, so I'm going to add a bit more paint this time especially to that cloud. So I think because I painted that cloud first, it kind of dried out a bit. Because acrylic, it's not ideal for printing. Ideally, you'd want like a printing ink. Acrylic is just, I know it's a paint that a lot of people have. It doesn't dry out too quickly, but it does dry nice and fast. So you get options, a few more options than poster paint. Not as many options as a printing ink. So I'm using my tin roller here. Thanks, Claire. Thanks for not muting me. <laughs> okay, let's try peeling this off again. Yes, that's a bit better. So it's quite nice. We've got like the cardboard pattern in the printing there, which I, I really like. And I just thought, while we were experimenting with stuff you can print with, I do a bit of bubble wrap. This isn't actually something I've tried before, but I have seen it done before, and you do get a lovely effect printing with bubble wrap. So you just cut out a bit of bubble wrap, do, do, do. and then you get some paint, and you just paint onto your bubble wrap. You could again like cut this into bits and use it on blocks but obviously it's only if you start cutting it up some of the bubbles are going to lose their air and you won't get such exact shapes so I think it's more for a background printing effect the bubble wrap. I'm going to try using my roller again on this but just gently I think. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, oh look at that. Get a lovely effect printing with bubble wrap. You may also be getting a lot of bubble wrap if you're getting packaging. So you could just get your bubble wrap from your packaging and your brown paper from your packaging and you've got beautiful polka dot wrapping paper. Oh, that's, a, that's a nice idea, isn't it? I might make some of that. Um, so let's get a bit more involved in our printing. We've got seven minutes. Let's get the wrapping paper back up here. Here we are. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to build on a print. So with liner cutting, you quite often do your first print and you cut away a bit more and do your second print. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it with the moon, I think. So I'm going to add a highlight to my black moons and I'm going to cut away. So I'm going to cut away this outside edge of the moon. So it's just kind of this more this face bit that I'm really going to be highlighting. So you just work into your original stamp. Obviously, make sure you've used it as many times as you want to before you, uh, before you cut bits off it. If you're working with a lino cut, this is what you would do as well for your second layer. You would go back into the lino and cut away bits. So maybe if you want the sky to be blue, you would leave the sky uncut out, print it all blue, and then the second layer, you would cut away the sky so you would, it would stay blue. Does that make sense? 
you'll see what I mean in a minute with this moon. Okay, now I wish I had some white paint because that would be perfect, but I'm not gonna make you watch me rummage through my paint cupboard. So I'm gonna try yellow and see if I can get a good effect. Nope, because the black paint on the moon is still wet. Let's clean that off first. No, I'm just going to see if I've got some white paint to it out look really nice. Mm, not obviously. Oh, I could, try, I could try one of these ink pads because I haven't tried one yet. So I've got these ink pads. They're just your standard ones for like doing stamping with. So I'm going to try using one of these. So I'm just going to get my moon all inked up. Then test run first remember yeah looks great I'm just going to so this is going to be a tricky bit because you can't really see but I'm just going to try and line it up as much as possible with the moon underneath oh beautiful and I'm sure if you guys are watching this you can probably do an, a much more tidy job and maybe come up with some more exciting ideas for your second layer of stamps but I'll just show you what we've got there we've got the moon he's got a bit of a highlight to him do you see so you can get those two layers of moon so it can look really really nice um might do that to all of them add a bit of white into my clouds maybe a Little um, little something into my stars, mix it up. So we're coming to the end of our hour. I've had a really good time. I'm gonna finish making my wrapping paper now. I think that's how I'm gonna spend the rest of my uh, afternoon. I uh, just wanna remind you, next week, we're making these rainbows. Beautiful. Um, you need colored wool, you need a needle, you need some rope but you can use wool as well. Um, and you need some wire. Pretty much any wire will do. I've just used some, um, some leftover jewelry wire. Maybe you can use garden wire, whatever you got. Uh, yeah, it will be really good. And you get to make one of these. Great if you know someone who's expecting a baby, make them a little present for the nursery or just make one to go on your wall. They're so cute. They're good fun to make as well. So we'll, we'll enjoy doing that together next week. Same time. Also, you can win a kit to make a notebook, so that'll be the following week. So that's the 11th, we're making the rainbows, and on the 18th, we're making notebooks. So go to our page, enter the competition to win a notebook. We're giving away three of those. Uh, I'll thank you for watching. I've, I've really enjoyed myself this morning. It's been good fun, so I look forward to seeing you soon make a rainbow next week. So take care, guys. Bye. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a à manger Qu'est-ce qu'il y a